Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this ep this episode is uh, on a new series called Urban Habitation. Um, it's basically looking at different cities and uh, the forms of sort of housing they provide. Uh, this episode is going to focus on Newcastle and Tyneside area with the uh, Tyneside flat. So if you're not aware, Tyneside flats are a domestic form of housing. Um, they are found primarily on Tyneside, hence the name. The, the main areas they are found are Newcastle, Gateshead, as well as Wearside and the areas surrounding Sunderland. So from the outside, these actually look like regular terrace houses and you wouldn't be able to notice a difference. But the, there's a telltale sign which you can tell the difference between a Tyneside flat and a regular terrace house in. Tyneside flats are a, a pair of single storey flats within a terrace house. The distinctive feature to tell the difference between a terrace house and a Tyneside flat is the use of two separate front doors. Um, if you see on the, any street, if you see two front doors next to each other, as well as, to, and then you'll see down the street there'll be two front doors next to each other, it's obviously a Tyneside flat because there's not enough space. So you might be wondering how this works. So the upper flat has a stairway that leads up from the front door directly up into the uh, upstairs of the terrace house. The downstairs flat has a hallway which uh, runs alongside the staircase. There is a small storage area normally underneath the staircase. Elsewhere in England, lots of flats actually have a, a one single entrance with sort of a communal lobby area. Then the doors of the flat then come off. Whereas Tyneside flats are very unique in the way they have um, each home have their own entrance. So in Heaton, uh, one of the areas is often found. Um, the housing mix is often that you'll find streets of normal terrace housing, and then you get a street of Tyneside flats. But the only telltale sign between the difference between these are the uh, two front doors. Uh, these can come in different varieties. Some will have bay windows, some will have a flat frontage. Um, and that's what the main difference is in architectural styles. So the history of Tyneside Flats. Tyneside Flats first emerged in 1860. This was in the mid-Victorian period. The first Tyneside Flats were claimed as the Shipcote Estate in Gateshead. These were built by William Affleck in 1866. The majority of the Tyneside Flat housing stock was constructed from the 1870s up until the outbreak of the First World War. The ones constructed post-1918 actually differ slightly from the previous set. These are often built with a bathroom and annex within them. You might be wondering why Tyneside Flats were built. So during the 1870s onwards, there was a great increase in industrialization in Tyneside. This led to uh, populations massively growing in these areas. Because of the uh, nature of the work was mainly industrial, uh, they wanted the working populations to live as close to sort of the riverside or the factories as possible. So the best way of doing this was to construct Tyneside Flats because you'll get a greater number of families within a smaller area. The first example of Tyneside Flats you often find are ones with doors that open directly onto the street so they have no front garden or no front space at all. Uh, later versions built during the Edwardian period uh, had a, a small front garden or a small front yard stepping the house back from the street. Later ones from this even have bay windows with um, stone window details. Following on from the First World War, Tyneside Flats fell out of fashion. Uh, mass council housing started to be revived for the first time. Mass council housing often took the form of detached or terraced properties rather than terrace uh, Tyneside Flats. This meant they fell out of favour and stopped being built in such uh, large numbers. Uh, another key feature of the Tyneside Flat is often uh, the rear yard. So because of the nature of the um, grid eye and street layout, these properties were built, uh, property, rear yard, then you have a back lane for the bins and then the other houses on the other side of the streets, rear yard, their house and then their front street. So you have two front streets and a back lane in the middle separating them. Um, the upstairs and downstairs flat often share a yard. So this is one of the drawbacks of these type of properties. Some yards, some sometimes side flats do have these um, yards divided in half. 
but you can see it doesn't provide very much amenity space. From a legal perspective, each individual flat is independent. When a townside flat is bought, the owner buys a leasehold interest in the flat they want to live in, and they'll buy a freehold interest in the corresponding flat above or below. Compared to a lot of other housing built during this time period, Tyneside flats were not actually built by factory owners, they were mainly built by um, speculative investments, uh, by people trying to make money. So in Heaton, with the coming of the railway, this semi-rural area really industrialised quickly and speculative buyers are the ones that sort of developed this street, gridiron street pattern and the street pattern that exists. Generally, Tyneside flats were designed to be let at the lowest possible market. So this is why they're designed with um, very little architectural features and they're quite simple in their design and construction.